stories you see and hear on Tales of Tomorrow are about people who face strange and unexplainable problems. These stories are created by those whose curiosity about the future and about the universe around us is vivid and compelling. Many of the situations in which the characters find themselves may seem improbable, but are they impossible? Nobody really knows. We do know that the universe that surrounds us is an enormous mystery. Our stories try to break through the barrier of life as we know it to discover in our imaginations what life beyond may be like. Tonight, the most famous science fiction story ever written. Tales of Tomorrow presents 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Starring Thomas Mitchell with Leslie Nielsen and Bethel Leslie. I, Jules Verne, in the year 1866, did put my pen to paper to record a fantastic chronicle of the deep. In the foregoing pages, I have related how somewhere beneath the surface of the seas sailed a terrifying mechanism which rammed ships and sank them. I have related how a young naval officer, Commander Tom Farragut, set sail on the frigate Abraham Lincoln to seek out and destroy the monster of steel. Finally, I have related how the Abraham Lincoln itself was rammed and destroyed, how Commander Farragut and his mate, Ensign Peters, were captured and brought aboard the monster called the Nautilus, commanded by Captain Nemo, 20,000 leagues under the sea. I think I've made it clear. I was saved from drowning and taken aboard the Nautilus because I needed you. My crew had diminished. Look here, we're officers of the United States Navy. You're prisoners at your will, but this is against the Articles of Maritime I Law. I observe no laws except my own. We must warn you, Captain, if we see a chance to escape, we'll try it. Where to, Mr. Farragut? In all the years I've sailed, I've never touched land. We'll find a way. Don't be foolish. There is no way. But mind me, in time you'll come to learn to love this ocean as I do. I'll show you things you never dreamt of. Look there. It's a city. Under the sea. There, gentlemen, that's the lost city of Atlantis. It's unbelievable. Atlantis is not a myth. When Europe was inhabited by barbaric tribes, Atlantis was a great and cultured civilization. But when the government was taken over by despots, the mighty sea rose up and swallowed the island. Gentlemen, that's all that remains of what was once a mighty nation. But that's only a sample. I'll show you this immense desert from the Indian Ocean to the Caribbean. But remember, the ocean in all its supreme tranquility does not belong to despots. Yes, on the surface, men still fight and cut each other to pieces. But here, fathoms deep, one can live free. Believe me in that, gentlemen. Here, tonight in the bosom of the deep, your lives are not ending. On the contrary, they're just beginning. And now, gentlemen, I'll bid you good night. Reading again? Read them all. Ah, I'll find some more for you. You know, I sometimes think we're on an endless journey to nowhere. On and on into eternity. Oh, you're too young, too beautiful to think about eternity. They say you captured two more for the crew today. They say, right? Ugly ones again. Have you ever seen any from the land that weren't ugly? No, but I should like to see these. Yeah, why? The sweet says they're young. Young or old, they're all the same. But I've never seen a young one. They're all the same. I should like to see for myself. No, no, girl, I tell you they are. Please? You're nothing more than a sea siren. You could charm the fish. <laughs> Go on, and see these men. <laughs> These here quarters. I will send food. How long have you been aboard this ship? I will send food. Not locked. Why should it be? We can't get far. Yes, we can, Frank. We've got to. We'd better look around first. Nothing to see around here. 
got to escape, Frank. Got to escape and destroy the Nautilus. So? Some fellas escaped Nautilus. That German fella, Ellen Vogel, he escaped. Oh. He died. Nobody escaped Nautilus. Nobody, not alive, not never. He is food. Eat. Good evening. Well, when did you get captured? I've always been here. I'm Captain Nemo's daughter. Well, haven't you ever seen a man before? What? Haven't you ever seen a man before? Oh, yes, but all of the men here are older. It's a pity. It's unfortunate that you have to put up with elderly sweethearts. Sweethearts? What are they? You don't know? No. You're very tall. I know. My father says that all men that live on the land are ugly. Oh, well, father's wrong. I may not be a picture, but I'm not ugly. And I'm a human being, not a slave. You can tell your father that a human being. Do you understand? I'm warm. Go ahead, touch me. Go ahead, touch me. You examine the captives? He, he's different from any man I've ever seen. He? There were two. The younger one. Well, your hands are cold as ice. Father, when you hold my hand, I can feel the warmth of you. But when he touched me, there was fire. Who touched you? My hand. Who touched you? My hand. Who touched you? The tall one. Come. Father, why was there fire? Now listen to me, girl. It was not for nothing that I built the Nautilus. Took you to sail on clean waters. I lived on land once. I had a home, four walls, floors, bedded in rock. So I thought until the rock exploded under me. I had a wife. Or so I thought. Somewhere, somewhere there could be someone you could trust. I trusted him. He was my friend. He shared my home, my happiness, my affection. Till I found he shared my wife. And I was through with the land. And all who live on it. You'll not see those men again. Father! I say you shall not see those men again. If you want me, I'll be in my quarters. The Nautilus sailed on. The days slipped into weeks, the weeks into months. The girl did not meet with Barragut again, but the damage, if one should call it that, was done. Then, one evening, I know how to operate it. What? A surfacing mechanism. I think I can bring this thing to the top. We would work out our escape plan. It's already worked out. Now we wait till the vessel gets within distance of land. Then you knock out the helmsman, I surface the ship, and up the hatch and out. Yeah. Out into the ocean. Well, we'll stay afloat. Not without life belts. We'll make life belts. Out of what? Oh, we'll think of something, Frank. We've got to. Knock out the helmsman, surface the ship, and up the hatch and out. What about the life belts? I heard you. Knock out the helmsman, surface the ship, and out. Well, doesn't look like things are going to be that easy. Gentlemen, I've been on Nautilus 20 years. I guess Captain trusts me more than any man on crew. It's a good plan you got, but it won't work. Not without the life belts. I've been on Nautilus 20 years. You said that. <laughs> 20 years. 20 years ago. I was young fella, too. I say, sweet, get off ship. Get back to land. Oh, Twenty years. Pass slow and nautilus. A man get old. Those life belts I got hidden under the boards in my cabin. But you got a life belt hidden old. away? Have you got one hidden away? Two. And by chart, tomorrow morning, the nautilus, is only four miles off tip of Horn. Sweet. Hey, I, I figure 
for four bells tomorrow morning. I wait for you in my cabin. Four bells. escape is impossible, but you don't understand that. You need iron to detain you. Well, now you have iron. You can rot. We warned you, Captain. We'd take any opportunity to escape the Nautilus. On me? Who are you to tell me what you'll do? Free man. Free? With your arms shackled? I offered you freedom. I offered you the power to roam the ocean, to see the wonders and the beauty of it. But no, you didn't want that. All you wanted was to crawl back like moles into your grubby little holes. Oh, hang there. Hang till sense trickles back into your empty heads. he would trap you? A man has to try. I've been watching you since that first day. I know. My father doesn't want me to talk to you. I want to do as my father wishes. I, I love him very much. Now, why are you here? Still there. My father what it was, but he wouldn't tell me. Your father wouldn't know. He knows everything. He knows nothing about love. Love. My father loves me. I love him. He owns you. He got you as his own special possession. You kept untouched and safe and cold. And you weren't meant to be kept untouched and safe and cold. This this love, is it something that landmen have? They're lucky. What makes it? A man and a woman. Any man and any woman? No. What is the sign? I have to throw your carcass to the fish to stop your filthy games. This wasn't that game, Captain. I don't want you to touch my daughter. Do you hear? I'll not have it. Do I have to kill you with these hands? Father! Go to your quarter, girls. Oh. Oh, I'm not angry with you. Because you've seen this face before. But not this man. You beat him. But believe me, child, I know what I'm doing. You beat him. I've beaten others. But not like him. I see. When he put his mouth to yours, it was warm. It's like bathing in the summer ocean. I tell you, it's nothing. This feeling will die like fish out of water. But don't listen to him, child. Listen to me. I'm your father. I love you. Did I ever deny you anything? When you were little and read about dolls and watered them, I fashioned you a doll from shells and seaweed and the bones of fish. Here, underneath the ocean, we have happiness and truth. This is what lives. This will last forever. Don't you understand? Yes, I understand. Oh. But you, you don't understand. Well, stay where you are. We don't ordinarily use keys on the Nautilus, but we don't ordinarily have fools like you aboard. He won't let you free again. That's not. If 
he did. Will you try to escape again? The next time we try, we'll let the captain surface the ship for us. The next time he attacks, if we were unchained, we could go out that hatch and out. Tom! That way, another ship would be standing by to pick us up. Frank could cut the steering cable. That way, the other ship wouldn't get rammed. Tom, for the love of heaven! Your, your friend doesn't think you should tell me of your escape plan. She's Nemo's daughter. If we ever do get unchained, he'll know about our next escape plan. I don't think so. Don't you? No. I don't think we have to worry, Frank. You see, if she did tell, how could she escape with us? With us? This is... This is my home. My home is on land. And you see, it doesn't die like fish out of water. Nothing. You haven't been to see those men again. There was nothing more to say. I knew you'd feel that way. Yes, Father. After what happened, there was... There was nothing more to say. Uh-huh. A ship. Hold on, course. Hold that call. Right. Captain Nemo! Captain Nemo! Father, what Go to your room, girl. We're searching to attack. Attack? I am sending them into eternity. We're searching to attack. I've got the cable, Frank. You two go to the hatch line. Right. We're going up and right, right into them. All right, Tom, I'd better make it fast. She's starting up. Still cutting the cable. You'll be ready to go up that ladder the minute we strike surface. Ready? Surface. You're straight on course. Straight ahead, speed ahead. We'll ramp them off the waters. Right. Oh! You're going off the course. The gauge reads right. No, never mind the gauge. You'll miss them. Hard to stop it. It's jammed! Yeah. Someone's fouled this up. Prepare for an emergency. Aye, aye, sir. Take it out. Aye, aye. Oh. I tried to sweep the scum off the water above, but the bottom of the sea is polluted too. All right, you down. Put them back in chains. Right. And I, Father. You! Will you chain me, too? You mean you'll go with them? Oh, no, no. No. Why do you suppose I pursue these ships? For greed? For power? You're not better than that. I've given you a vast universe to live in, and now you want to leave it? No, no, my child, you can't leave it. Here, leave these men to the fishes. Right. No, wait! Wait, for what? To listen while I ask a question. What question? What's wrong with wanting to go to the land? You know the answer to that. The land is evil. It holds the body and soul in chains. And here? Here on the Nautilus you have freedom. This is freedom? To keep men from their homes because you will it? To keep me here because you will it? No, no, no. Believe me, child. I, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. You rebel against tyranny for yourself and you subject everybody else to your tyranny. Your mind is so full of hate and bitterness, there's no room for love. My dear, what can you know of love? Enough to know I have none left for you now. Oh. Oh, no, you shouldn't have said that. As a child, you loved me. When you were growing, you loved me. Because I was free to love you, but now you're trying to force me no, into no, it. No, no, I, 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 I made you freedom. You can't make freedom for somebody else. You can only give it. She's right, Captain. Only a stupid man would fail to see she's right. You're not stupid.
Now the sun's shining. Turn them loose. Signal that British ship. Aye, aye, sir. We'll have to meet again, Captain. So the Nautilus stops destroying ships that sail these oceans. That won't be necessary. The Nautilus is through hunting. I could hardly sink a ship when I knew someone I loved might be aboard. Come with us. It's too late. Somewhere under the seven seas, a hollow, steel-clad monster swims. Its name is Nautilus, and its captain, Nemo. But the monster's fangs are full. The Nautilus hunts no more. <laughs> 